The word Egypt is found in 558 verses of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. It has a value of 73 in English to Matria. We multiply 558 times 73 equals 40,734. The number 4073 in Greek concordance is the word rock. Quoting, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Greek Dictionary 4073, feminine of the same as 4074, rock. Divide 4073 by a solar year equals 111.529 years, or synchronistic lunation numbered 1115, which was February 11, 2013. Mars, 15 degrees from the Sun, and Mercury, 17 degrees from the Sun. In Greek, Peacemaker is the number 1517. And of course, February the 11th, 2013, was the date that Pope Benedict, who is Peter, the Rock, announced his retirement and pulled away from the Vatican to go to Castel Gandolfo, where he began his communications with the Christ. He was the one to recognize the Christ, thou art the Christ. History repeating itself. Now, in biblical prophecy, the Great Pyramid is overlooked. It is ancient and impossibly complex to have been built by ancient people who were skilled at farming and certainly not advanced science. The pyramid is far beyond the capabilities of modern science. Some of the stones were quarried 600 miles away. Of note, the rather simple king's coffer. Under close scrutiny, the particular stone had to contain a precise volume and be of a specific gravity to leave weight precisely half of the block its outer dimensions are, and these reflect the dimensions of the pyramid itself. If we were to work backwards, the outer dimensions reflect the pyramid numbers and face angle of pi, and internally, after drilling out precisely half its weight, also reveals a myriad of numbers right down to containing 2,500 pounds of grains of wheat, which is the word for Joseph in the Greek concordance. The length fits between a space, either end, 58.13 pyramid inches, and is the height of the completed pyramid with the rejected capstone in place. 58.13 times 2 equals 116.26, which is the width of the antechamber. Out of Egypt I will call my son, Matthew 2.15, quoting, and, there, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Measuring the, planet, sorry, measuring the distances to the planets from the earth on two dates, April the 16th, 1927, and February the 11th, 2013, stand out. These two dates saw the combined distances from the Earth to the Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars and Jupiter were 10.82 astronomical units. The same for both dates, measured in astronomical units, although each planet was not the same distance of the previous position. Now, why those particular dates? Well, the first one, April the 16th, 1927, is the birth date of Pope Benedict the 16th. And February the 11th, 2013, is, of course, the date that he announced his retirement as Pope. That also being 84 years from the date that the Vatican City was declared a city-state. Now, 1082, this word in Hebrew means to break off or to loose, that is, desist from grief, comfort, recover, strength, strengthen. And here are the planets in this slide. 
There's the positions of them on each date in time, all to do with Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, who is Peter the Rock. Now, the word coincidence has been changed to fulfil in the New Testament and no longer found in the Old Testament. and begs the question why, when the New Testament has only 5,624 words, while the text it is purportedly interpreting has 8,624 words, 74 words, one could say deliberately. The original meaning of the word fulfil was coincidence, and even then was reduced from an older source, when it was God will prove by coincidence, and changed to 378 in the Greek, to complete, occupy, supply, fulfill, occupy, supply. So getting back to the distance of the planets, 2 times 1082 is 2164, and we have another message from God. In Hebrew, it means to agree on a place and a time and to prepare. And in Greek, it is to bear well, that is, be fertile, bring forth abundantly. And yet another coincidence... 3134, this is pertaining to the next diagram. 3134, Maranatha of Aramaic origin, an exclamation of the approaching divine judgment. Here it is here. Distance elapsed in days between those two dates, 31348 or 4478 weeks. 4478 is Rachel of Hebrew origin. 7354. And Rachel, of course, was the wife of Jacob. Hebrews 7353, meaning to journey, a you, the females being the predominant element of a flock, as a good traveller, you sheep. 7353 is also the area of the shroud of Turin in square inches when you multiply 171 by 43 inches. Just coincidence. Here it is. Yes, the three D image on the right. You can see the only fabric like it in the world, where uh, computer graphics show that it is three D. Now it is interesting that the Great Pyramid has a trail of ludicrous results from 400 years of obsession by the English, the accurate information is being turned over to the Egyptian antiquities. Now, the department headed up by an inept gentleman who has an IQ marginally higher than a chimp. Distracted by a banana. <laughs> Distracted by a banana. Zahi Hawass has no comprehension. This could only have been constructed by angels. And we're talking about the Great Pyramid. It's constructed by angels as this magnificent structure far surpasses the engineering accomplishments of the world's advanced nations today. In fact, structures like Stonehenge, comprised of 80 ton stones called Saracen blue stones, are so hard that one can hammer all day and make no impression nor considering the stones were quarried in Wales, a distance of 135 miles across mountains, rivers and bogs, to be erected in a location supposedly as a sundial, when a few posts would have sufficed. The perimeter measures 316.8 feet, which is Lord Jesus Christ in Greek to Martria. It has a moat dug out around the structure. Some of the stones are missing. It is assumed by experts the structure had 30 uprights, 30 30 lintels, the upright weighs as much as a locomotive. On top are mortised joints for the lintels, which have a concave to secure them into one immovable circle, 30 being the key. However, as these uprights are 26 feet high and 8 feet or so set into the limestone, no earthquake could shake them to the ground, yet this is the theory. One minor problem with that conclusion, the uprights that fell over and the lintels are nowhere to be found. Perhaps a half-crazed druid thought the fallen stones and uprights would make a nice fence and drag them off during the night. Another is Avesbury Circle. Now, getting back to Stonehenge, like the statues on Easter Island, it's all about Armageddon. 
Armageddon. <laughs> Another is Avesbury Circle. It has a deep, 45 feet deep and 65 feet wide moat, like circle one mile across. Experts found antlers from deers and concluded the ancient druids used it as a pick and chipped out this massive moat, leaving thousands of tons of limestone, which has mysteriously vanished, leaving the level plain as it was before the digging started. Oh yes, the moat was used as a mirror. Filled with water, the stars at night were observed and calculated to predict the future. Something to do with some messianic figure, perhaps. The Nile River, the annual flood, is a problem today, but 5,000 years ago, a circular basin 222 miles across and 300 feet deep was discovered with a floodgate to divert the excess water into it. Storage for when the flood subsided and when water was required. Same problem as the moat, this massive amount of earth has vanished. The plain is the same level as before the work begun. Today it remains filled with silt, leaving 90 feet deep and abandoned. And the answer, probably the same druid. All around the world, in far-off nations like Peru, Stones have been carved and transported great distances. A thousand tons is common. There is a stone, a stone, 200 tons in weight, has been quarried, then lifted 13,000 feet up a mountain to Lake Titicaca. In Mexico, there is a pyramid that has a huge sheet of mica, a material that flakes at the touch, identified to have been transported 3,000 kilometres, then placed halfway up a pyramid. The sheet is 40 metres square by 500 millimetres thick. In Costa Rica there are stone balls scattered throughout the jungles. Some are 30 tons or so, perfectly round like a steel ball bearing, sitting in the middle of a swamp on mounds, all arranged to align with the cosmos and impossible to move, lift, transport and place on top of a mound. Off the north coast of Australia there is an area of ocean 108 miles across with artificial island made out of hexagonal basalt, stacked up in a crisscross pattern from the ocean floor up to the surface 60 feet or so, and then a series of buildings erected. The basalt hexagonal stones, say the experts, natives on these islands built them. The stones weigh 30 tons or more, and they mysteriously were transported from some unknown area. No logic once again. I suspect the dumber the expert, the safer his tenure at university. In Melbourne, I investigated what company or organisation owned the grounds where all universities were built, Freemasonry prominent in all. While in Africa, the area of Rhodesia, the entire south is scattered with stone structures. The most complex is called the Zimbabwean ruins, massive structures built without mortar. The granite appears to have been heated, then split to a relative uniform shape. Several million built into buildings with 50 feet high walls and a maze within. The descendants of the assumed builders have mastered mud excrement huts with grass roofs. In South America, there are more roads in the jungles, mostly overgrown, than the entire road network of the United States. One may ponder why these structures are not on TV. I will tell you why. It is due to the domination by the self-identified, self-chosen of God, small g, the Jews. Control of every medium, including school books for our children. Reducing creation to a series of accidents with life evolving out of a rock.
The Great Pyramid is the biblical altar to the Lord as spoken by Isaiah in chapter 19, verses 19 and 20, a prophecy of the end time. Hebrew gematria for these verses is the same number as the height of the structure. Just a coincidence? In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. In that, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry out unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a saviour and a great one. And he, Christ, shall deliver them. The key words here are in that day, future tense, and he, Jesus, will send a saviour, Christ now. And you all know about the demonstrations over the last couple of weeks where 33 million Egyptian people have been gathering to protest their government and overturn. And of course you had the military fronting up uh, one day, just days ago, killing, as reported, 45 people. They opened fire on them. Egypt has been, they call it the Arab Spring. They've been in revolution now for almost two years. So the explanation is needed. Yahweh the Father, the Creator, came as the baby of Mary via the Holy Spirit. Father cannot have a father. Gabriel told Joseph not to worry. His spouse will be the mother of a holy thing. I quote Luke one thirty five, quoting, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, which is wrong, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now called is one way of saying it. A better explanation is, God as a baby. The word ghost is incorrect. It should be spirit. A ghost is when the soul is the father Yahweh within the baby which left from the cross. The concordance says ghost, but the concordance is saying spirit. 4151, a spirit, the rational soul, vital principle, divine, God, Christ, spirit, the Holy Spirit, ghost, life, spiritual, mind. Here, five, five, nine, zero. Now later the word ghost is correct, for only after death the soul becomes a ghost, as it has been the life within Jesus for one, two, six, two, five days, which is the time from September 11th, 3 BC, that conception date, born June 17th, 2 BC, and then died on the cross April the 3rd, 33 AD. Now he lived one, two, three, four, five days. And of course, September 11th, 3 BC, is the reason why those two towers were brought down on 9-11 in 2001. Israel behind it all, in cahoots with the Bush administration, CIA. Okay, now, September, sorry, June 17th, 2 BC, the sunrise to moonrise was 888 minutes, which is exactly the same for Sydney, January 11, 1944, the rebirth date of the Christ. Now the ghost here is the soul released from his blood to return after resurrection, which was April 6, 1943, the conception within the womb of his mother, Daphne Galani. This time a holy conception unto the most royal woman. She, unrecognised, Queen of Europe, United Kingdom, Jerusalem, the same soul of Jesus. Now incidentally, the 12625 days is 34.56 years from 3455 to make mouths at, that is ridicule, mock, uh, to lie waste and be desolate. Of course, that is exactly how he was treated in his life as Jesus. Now the next verse is correct and it pertains to now. Matthew 1231 regarding the Holy Ghost. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy, 
shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, Jesus in the flesh, it shall be forgiven him, but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, that is the Father Christ, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. And of course, we are in the world to come that he was prophesying about this very day. Matthew 27, 5, 50, Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yield up the ghost. That is correct. Now, ghost in the Greek dictionary, same concordance number, an intentional sleight of hand, so to speak, as it lists both ghost and spirit in this context, therefore intended to confuse Christians, as scholars are either Freemason Jews or ignorant. Truth is always buried when finally approved, so only the ghost is correct and divine. God. 4151, a current of air, breath, blast or breeze. Spirit that is human, the rational soul by implication, vital principle, mental disposition, etc. Super, or superhuman, an angel, demon, or divine. Now we go back to Isaiah 19.21. Because it means today. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. Now this here in Matthew twenty eight nineteen is correct. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is the Trinity. Preaching the Father, Jesus and Christ to come. The same soul. Mark 1, 8. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Or Mark 3.29. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, that is Christ today, hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Therefore the Holy Ghost is the ghost of Jesus after the cross and in the future. The same ghost entered Daphne go lightly, and she conceived in the same way Mary conceived of the Holy Spirit. Therefore the blood gave up the ghost. From that moment on the word ghost is correct and was alive. Holy ghost. One must have a body to give up the ghost. My task is to teach how this is no longer necessary as you are all back for judgment. No more chances either in or out. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. He shall smite and heal it. And they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. In that day there shall be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria. <clears throat> 